thank you, Arun. Um, next is uh, Dr. Ganeshan, uh, who we've been working with very closely in AIT. Uh, he's also the contact person in AIT for IDP. They've been involved in several activities. He's also a very good field biologist. Uh, so hopefully, he present a very interesting talk on common plants uh, and how to IDP. In the background, in one more frame, 
I could see some other prickles uh, here. So this is one of the rare tree where uh, you will be able to see the prickles, very stout, uh, tiny prickles. And many of you have been to Lalbagh, you may be seeing a huge gigantic uh, tree in the garden, it's a silk garden tree, where there also you could see the uh, prickle. And above all the last I put, maybe the contributor could have talked to a local, I mean the person uh, nearby the tree to tell, get the name, he could have told. So these are all the things which I put, it's basically, Dhanidharan knows that, the, he, it doesn't mean that he don't know it's a silk garden tree. He knows it, but still he want to get uh, people, uh, I mean, good botanists for the name the tree. But many other pictures uh, which I see in Dhanidharan Singh, left open, I think that uh, by following some method or as I said, seeing the tree, feeling the tree or sensing the tree, one can be very confident in telling the name, though there may be some uncertainties, but still uh, like a, uh, a trained botanist, lots of amateur botanists who can also identify it. But the confidence comes by seeing, feeling or sensing the plants very confidently in such a way that this is like each each plant has their own uh, fingerprints. So if you want to decipher it by doing lots of guesswork, I think all of you could become a botanist. So the rest of the presentations will be about <coughs> some of the signatures. Of course, we may not be having more time to talk about it. Maybe when we go out by using this uh, tools, what I'm going to tell to the following slides, you will be able to identify the plants more confidently, at least to the level of uh, family. So here I showed you finger like uh, leaves, there are five leaflets in it. So immediately one, we, many of you might be going to the forest or some of the still uh, this kind of trees will be standing in some of the urban area like Bangalore. This is uh, called Red Circle Garden Tree. You can see it's very spectacular flowering. Very soon uh, many of the trees uh, you'll be able to notice it on the outskirts of Bangalore yesterday you go towards Kanakpura or uh, Fossil uh, side. And here also you can see the prickles, very uh, conceptual prickles. And of course, the flowers are very smaller compared to the silk cotton tree. And you'll be seeing the characteristic uh, five or finger like uh, five or more than five finger like leaves. And of course, you can see at the uh, bottom the uh, silk cotton fruit, it's a very smaller fruit. So, by seeing this, we'll be able to connect it okay. This could be the silk cotton tree, maybe this is red silk cotton tree. This is uh, Bombax Siva, the other one is Siva Pentandra. So why I am telling is that just by seeing the familiar tree, if you are going into an unfamiliar terrain, an unfamiliar forest, you could be able to do a lot of guesswork. But you have to have the image processing method that is uh, recalling uh, what you have observed in the past and comparing it with what you are seeing in front of you. That is, a, that is a way one could become a more uh, practical uh, uh, taxonomist rather than becoming a kind of textbook uh, botanist. Okay, now I told that there are finger like uh, leaves. Then uh, most of you will be walking in the Bangalore streets and uh, this is uh, quite often you will be seeing this kind of leaf. Okay, this is what I uh, say. So this could be a silk cotton, one of the silk cotton tree. No, this is this is what uh, this is the under step, the next step, one for uh, to learn about uh, 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 seeing a plant more properly in such a way that you get their uh, fingerprints imprinted in your uh, memory. So as I said earlier, <coughs> there are five leaflets. It could be of seven leaflets, but in the previous plant it will be the, the leaf arrangement comes in. Sorry, uh, I'm, I'm trying to restrict myself for teaching plant morphology, but seeing a plant or feeling a plant, one has to know basic morphology, not, not going too much into technical details. But here, this is a, this is a node. <coughs> so one node has two leaves. The previous plant will be having one leaf in one node. So there are finger like, uh, I will hand like a leaf, but here per node there are two leaves. So definitely it's different from the one what I saw 
that's what I'm, I I wrote in the comment for so uh, that's what I tried uh, making a comment in Daniel's picture saying that uh, he should have taken a close-up picture of uh, leaf arrangement so if you would have put leaf arrangement it would have been much better but nevertheless uh, his collection is the frames are very good to identify to the species level but as, if you are going to be a person who want to document lots of plant diversity uh, you have to become a kind of a, more a kind of detective you have to keep on looking for why why it is different why it should be different from the uh, one which you have already seen so <clears throat> here it's a kind of a signature of this particular family called Dignoniaceae but uh, uh, not always uh, they will have compound leaves but uh, there will be simple leaves I will come later but always uh, these plants will have this particular family called Dignoniaceae will have opposite the compound leaves of course uh, these flowers are very characteristic in Bangalore no one will be able to miss it Jacarandas and Tabuvias <coughs> And if I, uh, as I said earlier, it's a compound leaf, and here uh, there is one more plant, and this is the uh, most uh, familiar plant uh, for most of you. This is uh, copper pot, Pertoform tirocarpum, and this is again uh, another plant of Bignoniaceae. I said opposite leaves, so you could see here some of the uh, uh, per node there are two leaves, but compound leaf. But if you see the leaf, you'll be thinking that they are very small leaf more like a yingli or a tamarind uh, plant uh, kind of leaf um, and, uh, there are many many small leaf leaflets so it's more similar to this in the vegetative condition uh, the, the reason why I'm uh, using all these characters is basically we don't see uh, most of the trees flowering all through the year so most of the time you'll be able to access to leaves or fallen leaves to identify so in this case you can compare and see opposite leaves that belongs to Bignoniaceae Alternately, that belongs to Cisalpiniaceae, that is uh, the copper part. So again, uh, just taking a picture, simply having a picture, uh, uh, posting uh, will not be of uh, so interesting and exciting over a longer run. Once you take a picture and try to see it uh, more closer, then you will be getting excited to see that, oh, so much of uh, differences. This is what I thought, but this is challenging me. And, uh, and and that will make you to go more and more in detail. That will be a kind of uh, a record in your mind that you will never forget what the particular character. Even sometimes you can challenge the taxonomist, saying that no, 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 this is a character I saw. What you are saying is wrong. Of course, botanists can also make the lots of mistakes. And again, as I said, the signature character for the Bignoniaceae, because most of you uh, in Bangalore will be able to go around Banagata or Bandipu, Nagarode, Diyaki, where again uh, uh, you will be able to challenge the botanist by remembering this opposite compound leaf to identify the plant or the Bignoni seed. It's a quite uh, diverse uh, dry forest plant, that's why I have put it here. <coughs> there are Dalicandron, then uh, this is uh, Radar Mashira. You might have seen a long drumstick like plant with lots of uh, prickly kind of thing, don't be very smooth. Uh, some people bring it as a souvenir from forest. So this is nothing but uh, Radar Mashira, Xylocarpa. And uh, these are also very interesting plants. Again, opposite compound leaf you can identify as Bignonia C. And you say that this is related to Jacaranda and Tabubia, what we have in Bangalore. And Jacarandas and Tabubias are from Africa and uh, uh, Central, uh, uh, Central America. <coughs> and of course, uh, some of you, uh, if you go to Rajasthan uh, kind of desert places, you will be seeing another uh, uh, Bignonia sea. Of course, there is no compound leaf in it, simple leaf, but they are opposite and you could see the same Jacaranda Tebubia kind of flask. And we, you can say that this belongs to Bignonia sea. And of course, Katamno stands, it's also again, the parks, most of the parks in Bangalore, you will be able to see it, opposite compound leaf. And even in this uh, campus, uh, some of the big Bignonese trees you will see. And another <coughs> plant most familiar to us is, uh, 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 is the jackfruit tree, uh, Autocarpus heterophyllus. And there are uh, there, this, this particular group, uh, they are called Moresi. 
Uh, of course, uh, jackfruit, that, that's, that's enough for me, most of us will think, but well, we can extend uh, our ability by seeing some more of characters like this. You can see a ring here, you can see a ring here, and you'll be seeing leaves, but there is one more structure here and there is one more dried brown structure here that's fallen. Actually, this is fallen from this particular node, so again the tip, tip will have always uh, a kind of some kind of covering, cap long, cap like structure. That's nothing but the scale that protects young developing leaves. Here, this scale is uh, uh, protecting young developing uh, 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 flowers. This is uh, one, one, one compound inflorescence that's lots of millions of flowers in it. So similarly, there is one uh, young inflorescence that's covered by this. Actually, when the scale falls, it will leave a, a ring here that will be persistent uh, scar all through uh, the life of the plant. So by seeing this, one can identify. Of course, this is one of the important signature character for the family Moresi. That is jackfruit family. <coughs> all of us know ficus trees. Figs, um, uh, at Bangalore quite uh, diverse uh, fig species are there, uh, at least uh, there are around 12 uh, uh, species should be there in Bangalore city and again you can see the characteristic uh, uh, the scale I said, it's a kind of uh, cover over the growing tip and you can see the scale uh, fallen scar here also and this is uh, ficus, so Resimosa. Then ficus amplissima, that also will have it. Unfortunately, it's very small. I put it here. You could see the scar here if you, are, uh, if you happen to have a twig. And of course, uh, I have put it as ficus mysorensis, uh, but don't worry about the name. Uh, here, the thing is that you can see the scar here, here, here. All these uh, things are very signature for this uh, family Moresi and any ficus species, any Moresi. At least you can say that uh, there is one more plant, Strugulus, that also will have a scar and you can challenge botanists by saying that this is a signature character through which I identified it as a family Moresi. And of course another uh, interesting family that's coffee. Of course uh, most of us might have seen the coffee plant, uh, but we might have failed to see some signature character like uh, uh, we call it as interpetular stipule. There is again a scale. As I said earlier, for the Mauricea jackfruit family, there is a scale uh, that is protecting the bud. Here also there is a scale between two leaves at one node. There will be a scale, it will be, there will be another scale behind this. is called, these are PTO, that's the stalk of the leaf is called technically PTO. Between the two PTO there is a scale, so that's called interpetio or stipio. So if any plant you happen to see uh, that kind of scale or sometimes it will be modified tan, you can, you can say that, yeah, it belongs to coffee family, Ruby AC. So you don't worry about, uh, uh, this, this is a more kind of introduction. So we can, we can go deeper and more deeper into this particular family and say, why I say this is Ruby AC, why I say that uh, this is Musenda or Kaffia uh, uh, or uh, Canthium, whatever it is. Basically, I'm introducing uh, uh, to how to see a plant more in detail rather than identifying a plant. So that's the first step. So here again is a close relative. Many of us know the Katamba tree. Most of the avenue trees will have a very nice looking uh, trees. And you may be seeing small uh, two wing like thing in each node. And here you can see at the tip. So this is nothing but again to fit your stipule. We can very clearly say that it belong to coffee family that is through ESC. And of course uh, you'll be seeing that band pattern ball. Uh, but uh, again, it will be confusing, there will be like park here, that also will have badminton like bulb. But by, if you are seeing a park here plant and that also has badminton bulb, this also has a badminton bulb. And somebody challenges, you can say that yes, uh, by, by seeing this uh, stipule that is a scale, you can say that yes, this is ruby AC or no, no, this is not ruby AC, whatever it is. And another interesting plant in Karnataka, say, Basun Pada, Basun Pada. This is nothing but a hoof mark. The very signature of this particular genus called Bahinia. There are many species, more than 15 to 18 species in Western Ghats. <coughs> and this is a climber uh, form of this Bahinia. Uh, and this is another small tree. And most of the time this will be confused with uh, another plant called Hardwickia bineta. 
I've forgotten the local name, where uh, the leaf uh, will be completely divided into two equal parts. You can see the gap in between these two leaf, uh, uh, leaflets. Whereas here, either it will be a three-fourth uh, united, or sometimes it is half united. So nothing to worry. So again, this is a signature character of the genus Bahinia compared to the genus Arvikia. Why I am putting it in most of the time we go to Bandarkata or we go to Bandipur. These are the places you will be able to very commonly see on the roadsides. So you will be able to make it. And also children will be very happy to see this leaf form and this will be a kind of uh, evergreen memory uh, in identifying this kind of genus. And <coughs> uh, maybe in one or two slides I and, and again, as uh, we are all surrounded by lots of uh, leftover forest, this is the most common uh, tree uh, in this dry forest, and some of the remnants are still there in Bangalore parks. It's a strychnus, one of the important, medicinally important plant. So there, uh, you will see at the base there will be three veins, like uh, like uh, the, the Vaishnavite uh, Trichurna or Nama, whatever it is. So basically, each leaf will have three veins at the base. And we can say that, yeah, this, 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 this is a strychnus uh, plant. But some people could challenge you by saying, no, 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 there are many plants which are having uh, this kind of three vein forms. Yes, there are three veins at the base, like a nama uh, or a trident. And this is another plant that also has a trident kind of vein venation. This is venation. But you can see that uh, the kind of uh, bluish green. And this is the lower side, this is the upper side. Whereas the other plant, will not have any, any such uh, uh, color differences. So of course, uh, uh, I put this slide here. Sorry, uh, I used uh, uh, the thing like visually impaired men. But uh, if we close our eyes and see the object, uh, only part of it, we will have a feel and we will try to interpret and that cannot be a kind of a holistic interpretation. So one has to completely have a feel of it. So then, then only we will be able to properly identify it. And that is the day you all will become a botanist. I mean, it is nothing uh, big science, of course. Nomenclature, uh, phylogeography, phytogeography, whatever we talk, these are all the very basic things for a person to feel. Of course, we are all interested in uh, contributing to IPPs, basically. What, what we saw in the morning or uh, yesterday, we discussed about is all conservation of our biodiversity. Unless we know the things, like we people know what is in our surrounding, so we need not be a kind of a great taxonomist or whatever it is, but at least to say that this is different from that by its own so character, that is a good starting uh, of uh, learning uh, systematics or the plant taxonomy or naming plants. And I think that uh, when, when you are contributing to the IBP portal, so you, you first enjoy yourself by seeing a plant, by taking pictures, part by part, dissecting it through your eyes and through your camera. You do not plug it and bring it to the lab where you have to use microscope. Use your eyes, dissect the plant, scan the plant completely, and, and you feel that, oh, these are all the exciting characters I have to share with the rest of my world. So that is when uh, you, are, you are going to get, uh, get the tag of uh, barefoot taxonomist or para-taxonomist. So thank you for the opportunity.